Welcome aboard. In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about working with the tactical map. Uh, and initially, we're just going to talk about the general uh, layout of the tactical map and some of the main settings that you have on that. We'll go into some of the more details of waypoints and things like that in some other video tutorials. The first thing you need to know is that whatever alert you have centered on the main alert screen becomes your primary alert and any actions you take with other features like the tactical map or the pre-plans are going to uh, center off of that primary alert that you have on the screen. So before you even go to the tactical map, obviously, you want to make sure you're on the right alert. So once you've gotten the alert centered on the main screen, then we just tap the tactical map button at the bottom. The tactical map will open and you'll see the incident that was on that uh, uh, main alert screen now located uh, in the center of the tactical map screen. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the other features that you're going to see on the map. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is you have some building footprints located on this map uh, and, and uh, the extent and of, of the detail of those building footprints will vary but in most urban areas Google Maps actually uh, has done a, mar a remarkable job in the accuracy of these building footprints so you'll actually have the footprints of all these different buildings. In a few cases you'll notice that you may even have some interior uh, mapping of some of the buildings. Now these are uh, submitted by the actual business owners themselves so it's not something we're able to put on the map but in the cases where the building owner has uh, submitted something like that then it's going to be located uh, on the map as well. For instance here's a here's a great uh, layout for Lowe's department store that even shows where the different uh, sections of the store are. Uh, also on the map you're going to notice some overlays on the roadways uh, that are different colors and these are traffic conditions in the area uh, and those are uh, updated in real time. You'll see them update about every three or four minutes. Uh, those are calculated by uh, the folks over at Google uh, who measure the speed of Android devices going up and down those roads and actually uh, adjust uh, accordingly. So if the road is overlaid in green that's a good indication that uh, traffic is flowing at normal speed. If it's overlaid in yellow or kind of an orangish uh, color, that's usually an indication that traffic is flowing uh, somewhere around uh, half to 75 percent of the rated speed of that road. Now when it starts to get down to red, as you can see a few sections that we have on this road uh, uh, here, which is a very busy uh, highway down through here, uh, the red uh, or the dark red indicates either that uh, it's bumper to bumper and going very slow or in fact may be stopped completely. Uh, so if you are viewing uh, the traffic overlays uh, for a highway and you're responding to an accident, uh, you'll have a pretty good idea of exactly where that accident is located because the uh, traffic backup will be depicted uh, right on the map. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other points that you see on the map as we go through, uh, but uh, certainly one of the things you can quickly see here are the hydrants. So we have the hydrants located on the map. Uh, up here you'll see another point that we have that's actually indicating the location of a pre-plan. Uh, so that's visible as well. And we'll talk about uh, some of the other points uh, that you can have on the map uh, in addition to that as we go through the rest of the video tutorials. What I really want to talk about is primarily the map settings, things that you can do to the map to adjust it for different uses. So we're going to come over here to the side menus. These are little slide out side menus. The one we're most interested in right at the moment is this maps setting. So I'm going to pull that out and you'll see there are a number of different ways to customize this map. Starting on the upper left, we're already in the standard view of the map, but if we wanted to view the uh, tactical map in a satellite view or an aerial photo view, we can click that and you can see that it quickly moves over to an aerial view of the uh, surroundings and the actual building where this particular call is located. And the overlays of the traffic conditions stay on the map and so do the, uh, the hydrants and other types of points as well. 
We also have what's called a hybrid view and if you click on that you're going to get a hybrid between the uh, traffic or, or road overlays uh, indicating the right of way of the roadways here along with the aerial photo. Finally, you have the ability to turn on a terrain view and the terrain view will uh, basically still show some of the building footprints but will pretty much just switch over to showing a depiction of terrain in the area. Now we live in a pretty flat area so the terrain is not all that exciting here but uh, when you get into some of the national park areas and things like that you'll actually get topographical lines and uh, some depictions of trails and so forth because this information comes from the USGS, uh, the US Geological Service. We're going to go back to the main standard view again and you'll also notice that um, we can turn the hydrants on or off uh, in, different, in different depictions. So right now we have the hydrants at 5,000 feet. So if I zoom out um, you'll actually see that we only get about 5,000 feet worth of hydrants. Now the reason that we have that is to keep the speed of the map refresh as uh, good as we possibly can. So uh, by not having all of the hydrants appearing on the map all at one time, we can actually speed up the responsiveness of the map. So you can have it on set to a thousand feet around the incident as I just did. You can have five thousand feet or you can have only the hydrants around your individual unit. So if you just want to look at the hydrants around your device, simply turn it to hydrants on follow and it will show any hydrants within 1000 feet of your device at all times. And then of course you can turn the hydrants off completely if for instance you're an ambulance uh, and don't have a need to have the hydrants on the map you can turn the hydrants off completely. Now also in the uh, settings menu we have the ability to pull up a Google Street View and so all we have to do is simply tap that Street View and we're going to immediately bring up that Google Street View, that 360 degree interactive uh, Google uh, Street View that you're, that you're probably familiar with and, and they're pretty famous for quite honestly. So if we spin this by dragging our feet, finger across the screen it'll actually just uh, spin us around 360 degrees and we can see all the different areas uh, immediately around that building. So it's a really good way to get uh, some situational awareness prior to even arriving on the scene. You can also use two fingers on the screen and zoom in or out of that 360 degree photo as well in the, in the event you want to see some detail. Now to get yourself out of the tactical or the uh, Google Street View you simply tap the button in the upper left hand corner and that will return you back to the tactical map. There's also a button for night mode. Uh, now sometimes when you're operating uh, streetwise at night the uh, map is, is so bright that it can make it difficult to see some of the things outside the vehicle. So if you put it on night mode it's going to change it to, into a darker map, uh, kind of reverses the, um, the colors and so forth so that it can be easier to use at night in the vehicle. And then the final uh, 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 button that you have in the settings is the points visibility. And this is what's going to allow you to customize what points you want to have appear on the map. So I'm going to tap that once and you'll notice that we get a separate menu where we can select what points we want to have showing at any given time. So we can turn on or off the sticky waypoints or the tactical waypoints which we'll talk about later. We can turn on and off photo share points and again we have a, a separate video tutorial for that. And we can turn on and off those pre-planned points that I showed you earlier. So you have the ability to toggle uh, and adjust what's displayed on the map at any given time. Now there are other actions that you have that you can take on the map and those come from this other slide out menu called Map Actions. 
Now there are only two I'm going to show you right now and the rest will be in a different video tutorial. But if you need to relocate the map to show exactly where you are, in other words you want to center the map on yourself rather than on the alert, you can click the locate me button and it will zoom right in to where you're located. In this case uh, this particular device I'm doing the demo with is Chief 4 and you can see that the map recentered on uh, where I am. Uh, again, if I, uh, I'm sorry, hit the wrong menu, but again, if I go to uh, that same menu and hit locate alert, it's going to take me right back to the incident. So I can very quickly recenter the map on uh, different incidents and different uh, points. Now in this display you can see a couple of units that we have uh, uh, currently uh, located on the map. Chief 4 is an icon of a small red uh, car uh, and then uh, the ARF truck, ARF 13, is uh, basically a aircraft crash rescue truck uh, that's depicted. Those will update in real time and as you're moving down the highway this, uh, this uh, particular icon will move along the highway and it will rotate in the direction of travel so that you can see what uh, direction it's traveling. If you are engaged in a call, and I'm going to go ahead and mark en route to this call, you'll notice that any other devices that are uh, engaged in the same call remain in this sort of bold color, but any units that are not engaged in that call uh, become kind of a pale or semi-transparent color and that's so that you can uh, while you can still see everyone you'll be able to tell the difference between the devices or units that are responding to your call and units that are either responding to a different call or are uh, not responding to a call at all so you'll see a difference and a change in the um, in the icon now as with almost any icon on the map tapping on that icon is going to give you additional information. So just keep that in mind. Virtually any point, whether it's a pre-planned point, a hydrant point, or any other point that's appearing on the map, if you tap on that icon, you'll get additional information. Now in this case, for instance, if we tap on the crash rescue truck, we'll get a pop-up that's indicating some information about that. Now, some of this information hasn't been filled in, uh, but we'll get uh, what uh, type of vehicle it is, uh, maybe the uh, staffing, the size of the water tank, things like that. So let's come back here to Chief 4 and see if more of that information is filled in. So this is a Chief Officer's vehicle. It does not have a pump or tank, so those are null values. Uh, it is staffed by three people, and it will give the current speed of that vehicle if it's moving, and will give you the latitude and longitude of that vehicle. And again, this updates uh, about every five seconds, so that information will stay current. Tapping on other icons will take uh, other actions. For instance, if we wanted to demonstrate uh, the ability to go to a pre-plan, we could simply tap on this pre-plan and it will bring up the um, uh, information about that pre-plan. If I want to see all the details of it, then I would tap on this box and that will be explained in another video tutorial where we talk about viewing pre-plans. Let's go back to the incident for just a moment. And let's zoom out just a little bit from that incident and you'll notice the hydrants again. Same thing here, if we tap on the hydrants we'll get additional information. So I'm going to tap on this hydrant here. Uh, we can see that it's set up as a generic hydrant uh, and then there are four fields of information that we can fill uh, with uh, data from your water company. And this again is an example we're showing here but the uh, actual data will vary based on what we're able to obtain from your water company. So we may have main sizes, we may have flow ratings, we may have uh, uh, location notes, uh, we may have steamer uh, connections or number of connections, th things like that. Uh, again, this is all dependent on what information we're able to get from your water company so that we can display some of the details of each of those hydrants. And you do that, again, just by tapping on the individual hydrant that you want to look at.